Hi everyone, this is Dr. Blake Bloxham from Feller and Bloxham Medical, and I'm here today to do an overdue update on the vertiporfin tests. So if you're watching this video and you have no idea what I'm talking about, no idea what vertiporfin is, uh, I'm going to put several links in the description of this video. We've already done a couple videos explaining what vertiporfin is, going over the day of the test. So um, watch those videos first because I'm not really going to do an overview of the medication or the actual testing here. This is just the first in a series of update videos. So. The updates that I'm doing here are on the three separate patients, and I'll briefly go through each patient uh, before we do the updates. But these updates are going from basically immediately after the test, so pretty much post-op day, maybe one to three, um, all the way through month one. So um, as we sit now, we're in mid-October. Um, I do have updates all the way up to three months on the patients. Um, like I said, I'm a little behind, I do apologize. So today I'm gonna go all the way up to month one. And then um, next video, which I'm gonna get out quickly, will be month two and three. And then uh, we'll be back on track where we can just do monthly updates with the vertiporfin. So uh, just a quick little little sort of introduction uh, before we, we dive into the updates here. Um, Something you're gonna hear me say a lot in this video, um, well first, something I've said a lot in the past and I'm gonna repeat it again here is, you know, it's gonna take some time before we really see how well the vertiporfin is working on these, these regions, what it's doing, if it's doing anything. So, you know, I don't want um, anyone's, uh, you know, hopes or expectations or anything to bounce all over the place because this is going to be a bit of a marathon um, and a, probably a bit, a bit of, a, of a bumpy one as well. And I have seen that already in some of the, um, the photos and the videos that the patients have been sending me or that I've seen is that sometimes you're like, wow, this is incredible. And other times you're like, oh, I'm not sure. Um, you know, we have to give this time. The body takes a while to heal. Uh, tissue takes a long time to, to remodel. So it's going to take a while. Um, Having said that, I'm gonna say uh, two things here, and you're gonna hear me repeat them a lot through the video. Um, thus far, you know, I, I'm trying to present this in an objective and scientific way, as, as scientific and sort of emotionless as I can, because that's the right way to do it. It's just to say, this is what I did, these are the results, you know, have at it. Um, anytime you read a research paper, there, there are different sections, and basically there's like an analysis section, you know, where you kind of go over your objective you know, analytic data, analytical data, if you will. And that's basically what I, I'm trying to do is say, look, this is what it is. This is, this is you know, here it is. Um, then there's also a, a different part of a scientific paper. It's called the discussion. And even though, you know, it's still pretty objective in this part, this is where you can kind of let your opinion, you know, in a little bit here. And so I will do that a bit. Um, you know, I will give my opinion on what I'm seeing here a little bit um, on top of just the, the objective, you know, factual presentation. And so the two aspects of my opinion that you're going to hear kind of repeated over and over again here, probably for a while, is um, this is what I, I'm seeing with the vertiporfin is, um, you know, observation number one, in, in my opinion, and, and my um in my analysis of what I've seen here. Observation number one is that um, the, the, the areas are healing differently. When I'm comparing the vertiporfin treated regions to the untreated regions, um, they're healing differently. And I think what I'm seeing is that they're healing slower, which is something we want to see with the vertiporfin if it, it will work in, in humans like this, is that uh, it seems to be healing differently and it seems to be healing slower. So that's, that's observation number one. The second sort of subjective observation here is um, to me, it seems like something is happening. You know, the, the vertiporfin is doing something. As to what that will mean in the end, who knows? Uh, it could mean something incredible and, and, you know, we could see something. It could mean nothing. It could be that it ends up worse, you know, when you use vertiporfin. That's, that's why we do these experiments to, to test a hypothesis and to, to see where things sort of land. But uh, it seems like the areas are healing differently and slower to me, specifically that's what I mean by differently. And then it seems like the vertiporfin is doing something. So with that said, uh, let's jump into some exciting updates here. Okay, so I'm gonna start here uh, with this first set of images. Now, if, if you recall from the prior videos, you know, I did this vertiporfin test on three different patients. Um, the first patient here is the patient who had a history of uh, hypertrophic scarring 
from uh, prior FUT procedures. And what we were doing is we were cutting out pieces of his scar in the back, doing a revision while leaving little areas of old scar in between to sort of serve as a support and as a test. Um, and then we were um, basically taking extra areas on the side and leaving these untreated. So treated regions in the back of, of two and a half centimeters a piece, untreated regions on the side. So the first set of images here, this is how this patient looked um, basically like a day after surgery. So he went back, he sent me post-op images, uh, and this is what you're seeing here. So those little hits back there, those little stapled areas, those are the vertiporfin treated areas. Those little pink kind of puffy areas in between, that's the old scar and it's swollen up because we were you know, manipulating it and working in between there. But those are the vertiporfin treated areas immediately after the surgery. Um, another shot there of the vertiporfin areas uh, right after the surgery. As you can see, they look good. Um, not a lot going on there. You can even see a little bit of maybe like a greenish hue, which is the color of the vertiporfin. So again, I think it's, it's in there. It's where it's supposed to be. Now, what I'm going to compare it to here, uh, these are images showing the, tr the treated regions in the back compared to the untreated regions on the side. Now, I'm going to go to a comparison here, which I actually just jumped to in a moment. Um, but I want you to look at this picture for a second and just see if anything looks different to you between the two regions. So when I look at this image, what strikes me as someone who does these a lot um, is the difference between the treated and the untreated regions with regard to a little bit of that oozing out of, of, of the wound and the scabbing that it's causing. Um, if you look at the vertiporfin treated regions, you see that they're they're very clean. There's not a lot of, of uh, fluid leaking out. There's really not a lot of scabbing. Then if you look up at the larger region there, that's the untreated. This is the part we cut out and staple closed without adding vertiporfin to the wound. You'll see that there's a lot of scabbing, which is normal post-op. Um, when you excise anything on the scalp, FUT, FUE, you get leakage. Um, uh, it's a combination of basically serous fluid, inflammatory fluid, blood, plasma. You get a leakage of fluid that comes out from the, the excised area. Um, and that's part of the healing process. You know, the, these, these wounds, when you cut something, one of the first things that we see is sort of an inflammatory um, cascade um, that follows basically like a blood clot. So, in normal healing, we would expect to see the scabbing like this pretty quickly afterwards. And I see that in the um, untreated region. I really don't see a lot of it in the vertiporfin treated area, which is interesting. So let's jump to this comparison here. So as you can see, again, those are the treated areas um, there on the, I guess, suppose left-hand side of the screen. Um, and the untreated region on the right. And again, you know, this is just an observation. This is this part of my sort of subjective opinion. Um, I think that the untreated region has what I expect, you know, post-operatively. Um, a lot of that, not a lot, but it's scabbing, you know, that fluid leaking out. And then in the treated region, I don't see it, which is interesting. You know, to me, that, that almost implies that, you know, the, the initial healing process is slower. Um, the, the untreated areas are sort of going through a normal progression of wound healing, whereas the treated regions aren't. So that is kind of what we expect to see with vertiporfin. So that's, that's sort of interesting, that's sort of exciting. So that's, this was the patient, you know, about a day, two days after the procedure. So the next image I'm gonna jump into here. So uh, the patient sent me this image about uh, maybe seven days or so after surgery. I just wanna double check this to make sure that I'm giving the right dates there. So he sent me this image, um, yes, seven days after surgery. So this is the treated area, or excuse me, the untreated area. So you can see in the bottom corner there, that's a little piece of that old, hypertrophic scarring that we were leaving for support. And this is right where we started, um, where we took a piece and, and did not treat it. So this is the um, untreated area. And you can see pretty standard scabbing. And you can also see that clearly that line where the, the two areas of the, um, of the, basically the skin that we pulled together are, are, are you know, locking together. You, you can see this again, there's normal wound healing going on there. So now what I'm gonna jump to are the treated areas excuse me, another untreated region. So these are the two untreated regions at seven days post-op, uh, one on the left side, one on the right side. This is on his left side. And again, you can see uh, pretty standard. You can really see that defined line where the, the lips came together and you can see a little bit of that scabbing. Now, what I'll jump into are the treated areas in the back, those little two and a half centimeter hits that we did in the back. So again, 
this is the the data you know the the viewing audience here can interpret it however they would like or they see fit but um in my opinion i am sort of seeing a continuation of what i saw in the immediate post-op or, or a day or two post-op where the um untreated areas to me i see scabbing you know i see a very defined line that is forming then when i look at these treated areas i don't see a lot of that i don't see a lot of scabbing um the area to me where i would expect to see a really nice defined line instead looks a little bit mushy um, almost a little bit soft like there's delayed healing um, and again this is sort of you know what we expect to see in invertiporphin treated areas so let's jump to another comparison here i believe yes so here's a comparison of the untreated those those two images stacked there versus the treated areas and um you know, I, I will let uh, you guys interpret this, you know, as, as you would like, but my subjective opinion is that these two areas, um, just up, upon gross inspection here, appear that like they're healing differently. Um, the untreated areas seem like they're going through a normal progression. You know, these, these scabs are forming, the, that tissue is really sealing together and, and starting to, to move on um, to sort of the other phases of, of wound healing or progressing through the phase of wound healing. Whereas the treated area, to me, it just looks, you know, less mature, um, which is, is pretty interesting. So next thing we will jump into here are um, images that the patient sent me at 10 days post-op. Uh, yeah, so he, he waited the full 14 days to remove his staples. When we do an FUT, um, we recommend 10 to 14 days before removing those staples. And because this was technically a revision on him, we were using this new medication, I definitely wanted him to try to go the full 14. But he sent me this update at, at day 10, and uh, th this is just of the treated areas there. And again, they look they look great. You know, I, I, don't, I don't see a lot going on there. Um, I see a lot of little hairs around it. I don't see a lot of scabbing. It almost to me looks like someone, you know, took un disturbed uncut scalp and just put staples in it so that's nice so the next images i'm going to jump into here are the day of his staple removal so this is 14 days after the procedure and the first thing we're going to start with here are the untreated areas i believe yes so here are the staples removed from um, the left side of his scalp so this is where we excised an area just for grafts um, for the the top there because we were doing a little bit more surgery on him as well we we're doing some surgery on him as well and um, this is the untreated area. So this is a piece that we took, did not treat it, and closed it back up. And as you can see, this is this is pretty standard. Um, the after those staples come out, that tissue tends to relax a little bit, and you can see sort of that indentation where the scar is going to form. And what you'll notice is that there's already tissue in there. It's not like there's an open hole or anything. The body has already kind of started to put some temporary tissue. Uh, maybe even some permanent tissue in there. You'll also see some pretty classic shock loss right under um, the, the excision line there. So what we'll jump into now, so these are the uh, treated regions after the staples are removed. And I believe I have one other, no, just these two for comparison here. So these are the treated regions after the staples were removed. And again, to me, they look different. Um, once these staples were removed here, I, I don't see a lot of that kind of defined line um, in between the two areas. I don't see as much of that, that temporary shock loss underneath. And just sort of as descriptively, you know, if we're looking for adjectives here to describe this area, to me, this looks a little bit rigid. Um, it looks barren, you know, it looks like like there is scar tissue forming in this region. When I look at these, they look mushy to me. They, they look like almost like the staples were removed too soon or something like that, which wasn't the case. Um, but again, is, is this delayed, you know, wound healing? And you can see a couple of these little, um, these are more, you know, defined areas here. Um, these are the old scars, excuse me, that we left in there. So this is old scar, that's old scar, but these are the healing regions um, where we use the vertiporf in there. So uh, is it healing slower? Is there something different happening? To me, it looks like there, there is. And what we'll do now is kind of jump into um, jump into a comparison. So just so you can view, there's the untreated area and the treated areas. Um, looks different to me. You know, what that means, um, whether I'm, I'm <laughs> you know, being a little bit overly optimistic or looking at it with rose colored glasses, it, it's hard to say. But to me, uh, it just just it looks like there's something you know different happening under the skin, like different processes. So 
Uh, that was the first patient after staple removal. So what we're gonna get into now uh, is actually some video that he sent me right after the staples are removed. So this is video taken at day 14 after his staples were removed. All right, let me just blow this up here. I wanna make sure this is as big as it can be. So here we go. Um, so this is the untreated area there. And as you can see, very similar to the pictures, looks kind of dry, looks rigid, looks like, uh, you know, still looks good. Uh, it, it, the scalp tends to heal very well, but just looks like a normal, you know, this is, this is where an injury occurred, an elective injury, but still an injury, and this is where a scar is going to form. So what we'll kind of move towards now, and that's a, that was a piece of the, the old scar that was left, and as we're turning the corner here, we're gonna get into the vertiporfin treated areas. So remember that we do shave up above and below, so that's why that hair looks shorter. That's a, a, those, those pale blotches there, areas that we left. But the hair and the kind of pinkish areas in between, those are the treated regions. Um, and again, to me, they, they, they just sort of look different. You know, They look like maybe there was something that happened there, but we're not really sure what's going on. You, you can see them clearly in between those, those areas of scar that were left. Uh, but it looks good, you know, it, 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 it looks like there's uh, something slowly happening there. It, it doesn't look like there's, you know, a lot of trauma to the area. To me, they look like they're healing up maybe a little slower, a little differently. It's hard to say. Okay, so now what we're going to jump into um, is video footage from one month. So this is a month after the, the vertiporfin treatment. Again, this is video that the patient uh, sent to me. So I'm gonna kind of blow up the screen here so we can see it as clearly as possible. This is video one month uh, after the vertiporfin treatment. So let's check it out. All right, here we go. So this area here, that's an old scar that we left. And now what we're combing into here is the untreated region on his right. So again, you can see the body is already laying down some of that fibrotic scar tissue. You can see it's, it's, it's pretty, clear um, of, of any sort of you know hair growing through it just looks like a normal scar there's one of the um, untreated areas well excuse me the old scar that we left and what we're going to comb into in a moment here are the treated areas now what i notice here and this is not only what i noticed this is what all three of the patients independently reported to me is that at one month what they noticed was they had a lot of hair growing around the treated areas um I, I, to me, when I look at that, and when you compare it to what the the untreated region looks like, you can see there's just a lot of hair growing through there. And like I said, all three of the patients independently, before, without me asking, said, hey, there's a lot of, I can feel hair growing all around there. Um, and to me, it looks like there's hair growing sort of through the entire area. Um, obviously, you can see, you know, there is some sort of defect, um, you know, there, there's something happening in those regions. But it, it, there's hair growing all over the place, a lot above, below. You're not seeing that classic shock loss underneath. And here we'll compare it one more time to the um, untreated region just so you could really get a sense. But again, um, there's just not that hair growing all over the place and, and what almost looks like through the regions like there are in the other ones. So very interesting. And what we'll get into here in a moment is a comparison of the two areas. Okay, so here's a comparison of the untreated and the treated regions in this patient at one month post-op. Um, like I had touched on a little bit in that video, um, and I'll get into your two of these other two patients, is before I even asked for a one month update from all of these patients, they all texted me um, without any any provocation, without me asking, and said, I feel you know hair back there when I, when I touch. There seems to be a lot of hair growing around those regions that you treated. Um, and if you look here, and I'm gonna blow it up so we can just see it as, as, as big as possible. Um, let's see if I can even zoom in a little bit. So um, this is a comparison of the treated and untreated regions. So this is an un, this is the untreated, as you can see, that looks like, like pretty pale, classic scar tissue forming. And then here in the treated area, the, the tissue is, it looks pinker, looks softer, looks like it's healing slower to me, but also there's just a, a lot more hair here um and these aren't you know hairs that we shaved up um anything that we shaved up would be here here um these are hairs that just sort of i have been i suppose maybe growing since the procedure or they're hairs that, that didn't 
experience a level of shock um, like like some of these did in the the untreated areas. So I, I can't say for certain, but I will say that when I when I look at this again, these two things I'm going to keep repeating. You know, it looks different to me. Uh, it looks like it's healing slower. It's it looks softer. It looks darker in color. Um, and two, you know seems like something is happening because when I look at that treated region, um, I see a lot of hair. I, 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 I won't you know, make any sort of uh, assumptions as to what it is, but it's very interesting that I, I see a lot of hair there. Okay, so now we're going to jump into our second patient. So that was the first patient, the gentleman that had the hypertroph hypertrophic scarring that we were kind of revising and also taking um, extra tissue from the sides to serve as sort of a comparison, a control. And again, we left little pieces of his old scar um, in between those areas there. And if you'd like a further explanation as to why I do that, you can kind of watch those old videos. Now, the second patient uh, we're going to jump into here, this is the gentleman who has had a few prior FUTs with us specifically before, had a very good scar. Um, especially for two FUTs, but we were basically cutting out different sections of the scar, treating it with different doses of, of vertiporfin, and also took out one section and um, treated, excuse me, did not treat it. So that was kind of our, our comparison. So first image is here. Uh, these are pictures that he sent basically two days, um, yes, two days after the procedure. So, you know, pretty standard. Um, they look good. To me, I, I don't I don't see a lot of activity here. They look pretty calm. You can this is a good uh, shot here for a couple reasons. Um, again, these are both treated regions here, uh, and you can see this is his old scar in between there. Again, we leave pieces of the scar in between. Um, and now in these next two images here, so the smaller section that you see right here, that's a treated area. This section here is where we begin the untreated. Area. So up this left side, we took a section and did not treat it. And again, at a couple days post-op, just like in the, the other patient, I see a lot of activity of normal healing here. I see scabs. I see um, you know some fluid that's sort of forming around the lips of this, uh, this wound here. And then in the vertiporfin treated area, I just don't see a lot of that. I also think I see a little bit of like a dark greenish hue. Maybe it's, it's just some bruising and uh, you can see in both areas. But um, to me, it looks different. I don't see scabbing. Um, it looks softer. It looks more like normal tissue or, you know, it looks like how the areas look, you know, immediately after we, we excise tissue. And this is just a close up here kind of showing the same thing. Again, it just looks different to me. It looks like something is happening. So what I'll jump into here next uh, are images this patient sent me six days after um, the, the procedure. So uh, first here is the, um, th these are treated areas. So again, you can see old scar, old scar. This is a treated region. That's another image, uh, another shot of it there. Another shot of it there. And now this is an untreated area. So, you know, the treated area here, untreated area there. So you can see, again, I see um, in, the, in the shots of this untreated area here, I see scabbing building up. I see normal fluid leaking out. In the treated regions, I don't see that same level. Um, so this is, is something now that we've seen in two patients where there seems to be maybe a slowing or a different progression that the vertiporfin treated areas are taking. And I believe I have a comparison shot here. Yes, so there is a comparison to treated region around, I'm saying day seven here, it was somewhere six to seven. Treated region at day six to seven, untreated region at day six to seven. Um, I, you know, the, the, the viewing audience here uh, can, can come to their own conclusions, but uh, to me, it looks different uh, and looks like there, there is something going on. So what I'll jump into next, um, I'm going to show pictures from this patient's staple removal. So this first shot here is the untreated area. So a couple things I want to mention here. Um, you can see, again, just like in the prior patient on his staple removal day, to me, this looks very standard. Um, the area looks like it's already starting to sort of form a little bit of, of that, uh, that hard tissue that is or will become scar tissue. Pretty classic shock loss. I'm not seeing a lot of hair around it. Granted, we do you know shave, but I'm not seeing a lot of hair around it. Um, 
and I, I I also start to see that 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 nice hard line kind of forming there. And now we will get into a series of the treated areas. So these are different two and a half centimeter hits because we took multiple hits and treated them with different dosages of vertiporfin from around this patient's old prior existing scar. And as you can see, as I'm sort of clicking through these, um, again, to me, looks a little different. These areas look uh, darker, almost purple, where the, um, uh, the, the defects are healing or where, where the tissue is forming, however you wanna look at it here. Um, I also see a lot of hair, you know, surrounding these areas. Um, I, I didn't really necessarily see that in the other one. They look pretty barren, you know, look like kind of some classic trauma shock to the, the hair follicles around that area. In the treated areas, I, I don't see as much of that. Um, some of these here are even hard to pick up. This is, I think right here, this is a treated region. Um, so they, they look good. Um, uh, this is a good example here. You can see this is where it's healing. Um, this is a porphyrin treated area. And just look at all this, this hair. Um, and this hair is long. If, if this was hair that we shaved that was growing back um, at a normal rate, I don't think it would have grown this long. So that's another sort of puzzling aspect is that not only is there a lot of hair around these areas, but to me, it looks like a very strong terminal hair. It looks like it's long. And um, in Dr. Barguthi's FUE experiment, I think he saw something very similar. There were sort of these hairs that were difficult to explain that came up kind of quickly uh, after um, the, the area was true with vertiporfin. So you know, what those hairs are, why they're growing at the rate they, they are growing at, where they came from, you know, who knows? It's, it's very difficult to say at this point, but a lot of hair uh, around these, these treated regions. There's another example of a treated region, that last example there. This is also a good one too, because you can see this is where we left old scar. This is old surgical scar, good FUT scar um, for, you know, uh, the number of procedures this patient has had. And then this is the treated region that's kind of healing up there and a close up of that healing treated region. And then um, what we're gonna get into next is um, the one month follow up. So the patient was actually at the office um, and I'm sure you guys will learn more about this very secretive patient here as we start to, to talk uh, to, to talk more and do more vertiporfin videos. But uh, this patient was actually at the office at the one month follow up. So I took a video and I actually, speak uh, and sort of narrate in the video. So I'm just gonna blow this up uh, so we can really see it clearly and kind of let the video do the talking here. First part of this video, obviously just showing, looks good there. So first I wanna show, so this is the untreated area. So as you can see, uh, this is some pretty classic kind of what I would expect for about a month. You know, there's, there's obviously some temporary shock above it and below it, but you can see even at a month, that tissue is already starting to look like normal fibrotic tissue, especially up closer to here. It's, it's already paler, it's already white. Um, some of that bumpy pink appearance is already going away. Let me maybe tilt down a little bit there. Anonymous patient who I will not reveal. And then here, so here's one of the vertiporfin treated regions here. Um, and as you can see, it just looks different. That's, that's the theme that I keep getting here. Um, there's more hair growing around it. You know, you can see there's obviously that we shaved above and below, so that's why some of that hair is shorter. But if you just look, just look at the amount of this hair coming in there versus here. There's just more, you know, of that, that curly hair coming through there. You can also see the hit itself. Um, you know, I mean, you, you can see it's, it's forming some sort of tissue or, or things are happening in the same area as a traditional scar, but it's just more purple um it looks less healed to me it's bumpier more mature. which yeah more mature which is sort of what we expected with the vertiporfin and um you can see so there's areas of healed scar around it from prior procedures so like this little white part over here to the right for example that's healed scar this sort of pinker purple part next to it there that's that's uh the vertiporfin treated area and again it's hard to even see because of all this um kind of surrounding hair growing around it but that to me this looks more like what the scars look like a couple days after we take the staples out you know when you take the staples out you have this very nice um hard little line and within a couple days the tissue kind of relaxes we see more of that so again slower healing same thing here so this is untre untreated to the left untreated to the right and treated area right there in that middle that kind of bumpy pink part there so what that'll mean in the end who knows um could be exactly the same However, it, it definitely seems to me like it's healing different at this point in time. And this will be a good example here. So here's 
old um, FUT scar from a couple couple prior procedures right there. So you can see that's what you know prior FUT looks like. And then here's a vertebral contrived area. So again, all this this frizzy hair that's kind of you know coming through there. And then really the only thing you can see is just kind of these purple purple little bumps. I was telling this patient that it basically just kind of looks like almost like a little you know inflamed reaction there. But that's a full two and a half centimeter piece that was removed. So very, very interesting there. Okay, so there was the one month follow-up on that patient. And what we'll jump into now is the final patient. So this is the patient where uh, he was a virgin patient. He had never had surgery before. This was his first hair surgery. And what we did on him is instead of taking, a, he was coming in for an FUT procedure, and instead of taking a full FUT, I broke the strip up into um, several different pieces, several different sections. This is something we frequently do for a number of reasons. We call it skip harvesting, modified FUT, a few different things. And one of the areas that I broke up was a 2.5 uh, centimeter piece that I treated with vertiporfin, with the lowest dose of, of vertiporfin. He was the lowest, only the, the one portion that we treated, and he was the lowest dose that we used um, in the whole experiment. But Let's jump into his pictures now. And the first thing I'm going to show are images that he sent a um, couple days post-op. This is maybe three days post-op or so. Okay, so this is an untreated area on his left. Um, looks pretty good, uh, a little bit of scabbing. It looks like this, this patient's doing a very good job cleaning in general. Um, and what we'll jump into here, so this image shows the vertiporfin treated region, which is the small area here and then comparing it to two other untreated regions there. So this is untreated, this is untreated, this is a treated region. And to me, um, this patient probably shows the, the least amount of, I suppose, uh, variation between the treated and untreated regions. Uh, again, there's a little more scabbing here in this untreated area, but to me, they look, they look roughly the same. Um, so this may be an early indication that, uh, you know, we're, we're still not quite, where we need to be 100% with the dosages of this vertiporfin. If it is something that works and we decide to pursue it further, um, you know, maybe the, the dosages uh, need to go up or maybe higher dosages mean a better response to, to a certain extent. Uh, maybe not, who knows. But um, you can see treated versus untreated regions. And what I will jump into next, um, so this was a couple days after, and then I next saw the patient back for his um, staple removal. And this was at day, um, somewhere between day 10 to 14 after the, the surgery. He didn't quite go the full 14 days. So I believe this is about day 12 after the surgery. So here we go. Um, and I apologize in these videos for holding my phone in the upright position. I, I should have turned it the other way. But as you can see here, so that's an untreated area. Um, again, looks good, but maybe a, a little scabby, a little you know normal healing there. And this is an untreated area as well. And now this little guy here is the treated region. So that little hit there is the treated region. Again, to me, looks pretty similar. Um, but there you have it. And I'll show one last uh, untreated area here on the left. So again, and again, that, that area has more scabbing. Um, this could be due to washing, you know, it, it could have nothing to do with the vertiporfin, but I think it's interesting that those other patients we saw, you know, very clear scabs versus no scabs. But uh, there is sort of his comparison before the staples were removed. And what we'll jump into next in the video is the removal process. That's a good close up there. That's the treated region. We'll jump into the removal process here. Um, so this is right after, actually, in the one of the procedure rooms, removing staples here. So these were the, that's the untreated region on the left. There's, excuse me, the treated region there on, on the patient's left and the untreated area there on his right. Um, so you'll see that there is a little bit more scabbing, you know, in the untreated areas, the longer areas. Uh, this, this could be due to a variety of things. And I see less of that um, in the treated area. Again, I think this patient, um, it's the, the, the difference maybe isn't as dramatic. Uh, but again, you can see a little bit more of that excitement there uh, and, and a little less of it in the, the treated area, uh, possibly. It also looks like there's a little bit more hair around the treated area, but uh, it does look like he has a bit more of that classic shock loss underneath to me. And the last thing I'll jump into here, this is the image the patient sent me at one month. Um, so again, just like the other two, and I, I'm, I'm not even exaggerating or kidding about this, he had sent me a text message or an email 
before I even asked saying, there's a lot of hair growing back there. Like I can feel hair growing back there and I can't feel it in the other areas. And this is the image he sent me. So this is his healing scar that's untreated here. And this is the treated vertiporfin region on the left. Um, to me, th this again is, is probably the um, sort of the, the most similar of, of the two areas, the treated versus the untreated. Um, however, I will say that the treated area does show a little bit more, excuse me, the untreated area does show a little bit more of that hard fibrotic pinkness, whereas the treated area maybe looks a little bit softer, almost looks a little bigger here, to be honest, um, which is something we'll get into in, in other videos, but um, it looks a little softer, uh, a little bit less defined. And I, I, I do think there's a little bit more hair around the treated area versus the untreated area. So, um, and again, the, the patient noticed this as well. Okay, so there was our first uh, update on the, the vertiporfin tests, our little uh, observational study here on uh, vertiporfin. And I'll reiterate, you know, what I've, I've said a couple times now, I tend to like to repeat myself. Um, I, I, I think these areas, especially the ones that are treated at maybe slightly higher concentrations, uh, I think they're healing differently. You know, to me, it, it, they look different. Coloration is different. Um, the the appearance of the tissue as far as it being soft or supple versus you know hard and kind of brittle looks different to me um, I think it's it's interesting that uh, as as we kind of progressed further towards that one month there seemed to be a lot of hair um, sort of around the treated regions compared to the untreated regions and and I don't I won't make any assumptions as to what this is but I uh, looks like they're healing and progressing differently and it looks like the vertiporfin is doing something we have no idea what that'll mean in the end um i don't think we're going to know for a while um you know i'm, I'm going to do updates here every month so we'll get to see things progress but i would caution uh the, the viewing audience and i should probably take this advice myself you know not to get too emotionally excited or down either way i think this this progression will be a marathon i think sometimes we'll look at it and go oh my god there's something happening other times you go yeah i don't know you know that's, that's not too impressive um and we don't know where things will, will end up in the end. I'm going to try not to bias the results uh, too much one way or the other, even though I am very excited, you know, and I'm very invested in this because uh, I just think it's so cool. Um, but I'll, I'll try to be as, you know, scientific and objective and doctorly as I can here. But um, that is the, the first update from right after the procedure to one month. Uh, as I had said prior, um, I do have two and three month uh, updates on these patients. I'm gonna do the video as quickly as possible. My, my goal will be for next week so we don't have to go a long time um, between these updates again and we can get back on track where for every month I get stuff from the patients and I basically put it up as quickly as I can so you guys can, can be as up to date as I am. Um, I will say that I'm you know continuing to see interesting things. Um, I think those those sort of two tenets here, those, the, those, those two points that I keep driving home have continued on and I'm still seeing different things in the two and three months. So I'm excited to continue to update everyone about that. I will also say um, that the patients continue to show, you know, no, no issues. Um, everyone is, is happy, healthy. I, I've, I've not observed or, or nothing odd has been reported to me. Um, and I also uh, would like to note that I really appreciate, you know, everybody reaching out. Um, I, I'm receiving emails daily, probably half a dozen emails daily, patients asking, you know, what are you, what are you doing here? Is there a way that I can participate? I've had a few researchers, you know, reach out, which is, is fantastic. I have so much respect for the people that do this full time. Um, and hopefully I can kind of feature some of them on the channel and do some videos with them. And uh, I thank the patients that I see coming in, you know, during the consultations. Almost everyone's asking me about it. I've had some very interesting conversations during procedures and in consultation with patients about it. Um, so it's nice to see that, you know, the community is excited about this. I'm excited about this as well. And uh, I'll leave it there uh, until I see you guys for the next update video, which I will try to get up quickly, I promise. Um, as uh, usual, thank you to everyone for, for watching these videos. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Um, typically our channel is, is, is much more focused on hair transplant surgery, which is primarily what we do here. So if you stumbled upon this video and you're like, hey, where are the, you know, the wet comb through videos? Uh, tons of those on the channel, tons of those will be coming as well. Um, but uh, if you are interested specifically in the vertiporfin updates, please subscribe. Um, it'll probably be the easiest way to get these vertiporfin updates. They're gonna continue for at least a year. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you in, in advance for subscribing. T thank you for those who have already subscribed. Thank you to everyone who's watching these videos. And as always, I am Dr. Blake Bloxham from Feller and Bloxham Medical, and we will see you guys in the next one.